greetings, programs. This is Wretch. Welcome back to the Thaumaturge. And Victor has quite the hangover, guys, because in the last episode, we concluded our evening with Abby. And our reward for that, besides an absolutely splitting headache, is a brand new salutor. We have Lelic, a.k.a. Chicken, um, who is part of the Mind Tree. Unfortunately, we need to get mastery over Chicken, and that's going to require Rasputin's help. So... In terms of our quests, the only two things that we can actually do right now is Taming Darkness to go visit Rasputin and the Reptilian Bash. So let's go ahead and head to Rasputin. Actually, before we do that, we probably need to go have an awkward conversation with our sister. She was not particularly pleased with us, as you can imagine. Did you go? Yes. Oh, never mind. She I'll get going. As you can see, we were very pale and sweating. And not just because of all the copious amount of vodka that was drunk. It was also just due to the fact that we are right now compromised. So it probably would be the best time to go talk to Rasputin. Let's go. Then, depending on how long this takes, we'll uh, see about visiting a tailor and a barber. Ooh. Okay, so Rasputin's hanging out near the cemetery. Why am I not surprised? I am Ivan's complete lack of surprise. Hello. A beautiful tune, as if the fiddle were alive and carried it on its own. For a brief moment, I felt like someone had touched a string in me that I didn't know existed. I love that new things pop up. Can't go wrong with good violin music. Um, map? Is there anything... There's another point of interest? Cemetery Merchant. Get a stake for when your life is at stake. Make any vampire quickly retire. An aspen steak for you, sir? Premium wood carved at midnight on the solstice. Oh, wow. Quality. They're cheap. The steaks are exquisite, I must admit. What else do you sell? Holy icons, miraculous Marys, salt. Table salt? Consecrated, but the stakes, I tell you, sir. Ever since they buried the magician, they've been selling like hotcakes. Anyone with some sense buys them. Do you believe in all of this? I believe in money. And if people are willing to buy a stick out of fear, then who am I to argue? Glad to know that Dad's stimulating the economy even in death. Vampires. I don't think so. What do you mean? The dead rising at the cemetery? They must be vampires. Vampires are salutors attracted by blood and sizzling passion. There's nothing interesting for them among the dead. It's what people believe that matters. Whew. Goodbye. I hope the vampires don't take revenge on you. They have no interest in me. I'm anemic. <laughs> Please, tell your friends. On Wednesdays, I sell four steaks for the price of two. Very Ferengi. I appreciate the hustle. Okay, was this, uh... Yeah, admire the view, which we already did. Never mind. Double check. Barber... Of course Rasputin was living near the spot where those girls were checking us out. Right here. Absolutely perfect. Yes, sir? Please let me in. It's urgent. You can't just turn up like this. What will I tell sir and madam? Fear not. I'm here for Rasputin. I can sense he's in a drawing room. That was a weird interaction.
Hello. Ooh, what a nice bathroom. There are things. The apartment, while not too big, is impressive. It's well furnished and displays their wealth. Invitations. A pile of invitations to tea parties and dinners from Warsaw's notable personalities. The most recent one is from Countess Lermontoya. Already making those connections is Rasputin. Okay, he's hanging out over there. Gives us time to poke around and be nosy. 365 dinner recipes for 5 PLN by Luciana C. Bread pudding. Slice your bread. Whole meal is best. Thinly and dry it to brown. Then mash it into flour. Take three tablespoons of this bread flour, a glass of French wine, a cup of sugar, add eight egg yolks into it, add some cloves, cinnamon, mashed vanilla, pour a tablespoon of clarified butter and the foam of said egg white, or said eight egg whites. Mix together, pour into a saucepan, greased with butter, and sprinkle with breadcrumbs, and put it in the oven for a quarter of an hour. Serves four to six people. Sounds like it has the potential to be delicious. All right, nothing there. <laughs> All right, who? Medications, various medications and tinctures in decorative bottles, specifics prescribed by doctors and quacks. Perfume bottle. A bottle of expensive French perfume, gifted to Rasputin by the family. Most likely the suggestion that he might try to conceal his intense odor for the benefit of everyone. The gift was accepted, set aside, and never used. Oh yeah, I bet he's a bit ripe. As is Victor, because he hasn't uh, bathed after the night that he had. A decorative fan made of marabou feathers. Anelia's quivering words still waft over the fan uttered either to her husband or herself, complaining about her failing health and psyche. The small gust of air didn't bring any relief. Rasputin stinks. Oh. The family are well situated, quite prosperous, they live a comfortable life and have friends in high places. No wonder Rasputin has chosen them. He seems to have won their favor by taking care of Anelia, who suffers from a nervous disorder. Is that him? In the flesh. Allow me to introduce you. My dear hostess, Aniela Narodzinska, and my dear friend, Viktor Shulski. Your father had a beautiful funeral. Thank you. My dear, we finished for today. Now I'll find out what brings Viktor to us. What brings you here? So many things. You were the one who found. Very funny. Um. Yeah, let's go down the line here before we say about hypnosis. Have you known them long? No, but Aniela and Lucian are my two good souls. They took me, an impoverished preacher, in under their roof. And I'll never forget that. Are you helping them too? I am a bomb for Aniela's frazzled nerves. But enough of that. Tell me what you need. Help me to help you, Victor. Why was she looking at me so oddly? What did you tell her about me? She's never seen a thaumaturge before. I only mentioned to her how we met. Can I help you at all? You look like you've made yourself at home. Are you going to be staying on here for long? No, I'm afraid not. They're kind people, but I've experienced another vision. Though not fully terrifying, it is troubling. It's just slightly disturbing. Later, what brings you to me? Actually, I don't feel great. Let's see what you've brought with you this time. 
Close your eyes and focus on my words. Concentrate on my voice. Relax and focus within yourself. Follow my voice inside yourself. The husband was not happy. <laughs> Saw him in the background. Where is he? I don't see him, but I can sense. Chicken! So that's how you want to play. That chirping of his is unbearable. Do you hear him? Good. That means you can locate him. Point him out to me. Focus on his song and show me where he's hiding. Chirps in the dark. All of a sudden, just bites the finger. You have him. I was kind of hoping we were going to have to walk around in darkness and like listen to the audio cues. Okay, Lelik has been tamed. Sometime later. You look better. You slept a long time. I took your sister's checkbook. Yes, it feels that way. What year is it? Still 1905. Yet time flows on inexorably. No, I won't bother you. We can talk next time. The Narazinski door is always open to you. I see why we need to keep Rasputin happy, because he's the only one who can do this for us. Okay. Chicken is much happier now. This upgrade allows you to manipulate the dimension of mind. Reduces focus. Protects you against states being inflicted on you in a given round. I figured, yeah, that's all Chicken does is just distract Lowers all enemies focus by one. Interrupt an enemy's planned action if the enemy's in the suffering state. Removes all negative states from you and transfers them to an enemy. Protects you against states being in... Oh, that's going to be great. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and throw in some points here. So, thoughtful development inflicts damage. Icy Armor. Lowers taken damage from every attack by four. This upgrade... Okay. Reduces inflicted damage by... Oh, this is the tank. The tank thread. Increases damage by an additional 100% if the enemy is in the suffering state. That will be great for cuddles. And ice. Awesome. So, in terms of our attacks, what should we do here? Body stiffening increases damage by additional if they're in the... Okay. So, if we had something where we could do... Okay, old wound. Both of these do suffering. Um, man, agony, agony. Planned attacks. I guess what we could probably do that one restores the focus. I'm gonna have to look at this one up. That's gonna that's gonna take some time. I feel to figure out just the perfect combo. <laughs> so strange, so handsome. He does have a strange power. How's the husband feel about this? I'm glad that they closed the doors behind them. Oops. <laughs> He's like, I am so screwed. Well, now we have this. Mailbox. 
It belongs to a certain Mr. and Mrs. Kroguki. It seems to be a little frequented. Apart from the denouncing letters from the Okrana, the mailbox is filled with deliberation and doubt whether anyone actually reads the messages she delivers on a regular basis. Against the agenda, the woman I met at the WAS headquarters is secretly snitching on them to the Okrana. However, her romantic notion of a spy's work has been confronted with reality. I could easily solve the conflict with the anti thaumaturgist but would be at the cost of giving her up to... Oh, yeah. I'm not going to give her up. That does give us some options, though. Ew. Well, the anti thaumaturgists are still here. Can we... Before we go do any of the evening wear... Let's see. Word three? Ah, oh, we're still... We're still blocked by that. I don't want to do this until we have all of our clues and all of our eggs in the basket. Let's catch a tram. Oh, wait a minute. We need to go see the, the barber, right? The barber is right here. Fancy hairdresser. Come in. Please set my hair to rights. Yes, sir. What are our options? Classic disarray. Proper Warsaw lad. Ew. Graveyard. I like the the Ichabod crane here. We're keeping that. But let's go ahead and change up the facial hair a little bit. That's interesting. Man, Victor has kind of an Abe Lincoln vibe to him. Let's go. Let's go with that just because that's kind of the beard I wear in real life. Just not as long. Speaking of Abe Lincoln. Yeah, just a little trim. We can always change it up. I'm sorry. I don't usually talk to clients. Do you like it? I feel like freeing the slaves. But that that's already happened. I can't help noticing that you're the most tight-lipped barber I've been to. And even you admit that you rarely talk to clients. Why is that? When I prepare them for their final journey, it's hard to ask for their opinion. So you style the deceased too? Mostly. They still need to look good. After all, you only get a funeral once in your lifetime. So, what do you think? Do you like it? Hmm, let's do something a little bit. I'm not sure. Maybe too much pomade? You know it's all the rage now. But that's alright, we'll change it. Got the best hair growing money can buy. Let's go for that. Yeah. I'm sorry. I don't usually talk to... Yes, you're talented. Years of practice. My clients are always satisfied. Cool. We'll go with that for right now. Now, to the tailors. I don't know, I'm liking Victor. The, I liked Victor's initial character design, just looks great. So I, I wouldn't mind getting like a little bit of a trim, but not too much. I call that style, um, <laughs> like, Johnny Depp Antiquity. Because it's the Sweeney Todd hair, it's the Ichabod Crane hair, it's, um... 
Abernathy's from hell. <laughs> There's a particular timeline between the 1700s and uh, 1700s and all the 1800s. Chances are, if Johnny Depp played a character, he's using this hairstyle. Or at least a variation of it. Oh, check the map for anything else. Point of interest, point of interest. We've all done that. Okay. Ooh. Coffee cups. Dirty coffee cups. In the dregs, I can still feel the stress that urges the tailor to make more coffee and drink it hastily. Coffee is better than sleep. To sleep is to waste precious time that could be used for more alterations. I do know folks in cosplay that that is their mentality. Imploring note. The note was written by the tailor's impatient customer, urging him to promptly complete the order. Otherwise, they threaten to revoke their advance and ruin the tailor's reputation. Ooh. Scribbled patterns, incomplete tailoring designs. There's a staggering anger radiating from the patterns. Desperate hands tried to sketch something valid, interesting, and original to no avail. All that's left is chaos and impatience. Tailor's Mannequin. This is where the tailor's ideas come to fruition. There are individual threads of focus left on the mannequin being ripped apart by customers' visits. All the ideas that aren't good enough are rejected. Nothing but more alterations. Tailor struggles. The tailor has a steady hand for sewing, but his head reverberates with a lack of ideas. He needs inspiration, as frustration and impatience won't breed any good ideas. The way things are going, he won't finish the job or find creative peace. Maybe we could help him out. Excuse me. Damn it. I forgot to turn the key. Sorry, what? You tell me. Ooh, saucy. What is it? Hmm. Something continues to elude us. I couldn't help noticing you're struggling for inspiration. You've got a keen eye. The book makes it easier. I have to guess what everyone has in their mind. Dude was in the is Navy. Any way I can help? I want to know what people look for in fashion these days. Back in the day, all you needed was two pad legs and a space for your Johnson. <laughs> I don't know what else. <laughs> if you tell me that, I'll be grateful. I'll sue you anything you want in return. Let me sharpen my senses. I won't bother you. All right. Well, that's interesting. We received a quest, the Tailor's Dilemmas. What do we got here? Get changed. Ooh. You want to change your clothes, use the wardrobe. You can expand your clothes by visiting the Tailor. Ah. Well, isn't that a coincidence? Well, let's get this over with. I need some evening wear, quick. Good proportions. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Alterations won't take long. Your name and address, sir? Viktor Shulsky, 9 Green Square. I'll send a messenger when I'm done. Now, I'd like to go to my business. I won't bother you. All right. Prepare for the soiree. But what was that other one that we had to do here? Um... Find Taylor Inspiration. Let's go ahead and track that. Or is that something... The Taylor promises that his skills go far beyond what he can offer at the moment. However, he needs inspiration straight from the bustling streets of Warsaw. I'm, retur I'm to return to him if I find something worthy of being called a fashion trend. Well, I mean, I'm supposed to just walk around until I find something? Kids having a tantrum? 
That is like the most awkward thing ever. Well, I guess I'll have to try that at another time. Prepare. And we bought a dress suit. I have to remember, this is still like one of the beginning quest lines, so a lot of stuff isn't going to reveal itself to me just yet. I think we just need to head... Hello? Empty tube. An empty tube of purple paint. The petals of the mallows tremble in the wind, just like her lips trembled during the first kiss that hot summer. Violet ripped with sunshine, and her heart filled with sweetness. The memory of that moment awakens every time she colors the canvas with violet. What is this from? Dirty coffee cups. A dream within a dream. Mowage. That blessed arrangement. That dream within a dream. And love. Woo, love, will follow you forever. So treasure your wife. Sorry. <laughs> um. Interesting. So that's new. Man, Taylor works fast. Puts a bow. I don't know. I don't know. I see you went to a barber. That's something at least. Recently I met a bearded guy who's not especially fussy about his appearance. And yes, people welcome him everywhere with open arms anyway. Hmm, maybe he's a natural charmer. I've heard that can get you into the Imperial even without a tailcoat. Very funny. Are you getting dressed so we can go, or have you changed your plans? Yeah, let's do this. Yes, let's go and see if I do fit in. In that case, I'll go get changed too. You're already dressed, like, gorgeously. Look at you. And here I worried I was the only one who looked good in trousers. Very chic choice. Thank you. You look fantastic. Thank you. You think Papa would be mad that we're going to a party right after his funeral? I hope so. Victor. He could have kept from losing the Black Grimoire. Are we ready? Yes, the carriage is waiting. There's a difference between being proud and being a prick, right? At least in my opinion. Welcome to the Imperial Hotel. How may I help you? Ligia Szulska, here on the invitation of Svetlana Romianceva. Yes, we are expecting you, of course. The uh, soiree is taking place in apartment 237, second floor. I wish you a thrilling and successful evening. I'm impressed. How did you sort that out? Our name still means something. Let's do our best to keep it that way, all right? So, no more nights out with Abby. Understood. Ooh, do we have another salutary? Oh. Trust in me. Victor? 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 Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, of, of course. These people are just waiting for us to put a foot wrong, understand? We're walking into the Vipers then, brother. You're telling me. Everything's alright. I just got a little lost in thought. I'll be good. I promise. 
I'm going to hang around here a little longer. I'll meet you upstairs. Huh. See you there. The plot has thickened. So that's why they called it the Reptilian Bash. Interesting. I heard a long hiss and a rustle of scales. This can only mean one thing. There's a salutor somewhere in the Imperial Hotel and someone with a flaw. And we will try and figure out who that person is, guys, in the next episode. Hope you all have enjoyed it. If you liked the episode, please leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment. That'd be a big help. I will see you next time. Later days, everyone.